Hello, my name is Natalie. Welcome back to another video about IMM. Today we explain better the key categories, the structural attributes that direct the functioning of an urban system. Let's start. We start with porosity. Porosity, in simple terms, is all about how cities are put together spatially. It's the relationship between volume and the empty spaces that define a city's physical structure. Now, you might think it's a straightforward concept, but trust me, it's not that simple. Porosity involves complex math that reveals how different parts of a city work together. In IMM, we're taking a scientific perspective on urban systems. We use the term porosity to describe certain physical qualities, just like how you talk about the properties of a material. So here, we're interested in measuring the formal and spatial attributes, almost like we're studying a sponge or something porous. The porosity metrics cover a variety of parameters, like the types of buildings, how they're spread out, how much space they occupy, and more. It's a bit like trying to understand the structure of a city from a mathematical point of view. Let's dive into proximity, which is all about how easy it is to get around on foot in cities. We're basically asking, how do the types of uses affect how people walk around, and why do some streets have a bustling crowd while others feel deserted? It's like unraveling the secrets of urban life, from traffic patterns and economics to the vibe of public spaces. Besides the location of destination points, many other parameters are involved in proximity, such as the connectivity and length of links, comfort factors, the density of different land uses, and even visual attractions like the surfaces and window shops. Let's talk about diversity, our next key category. Just like the name suggests, it's all about the variety of different elements you find in the urban system, especially when it comes to different types of land uses. So with diversity, we're trying to figure out how all these different land uses can play a role in how people move around the city and make choices. It's also a way to understand the level of self-sufficiency of neighborhoods and social life in the context of a city. Now, there could be many ways you could categorize all the different elements in a city, but in IMM, we've got our own unique approach. We're looking at things like how attractions change over time and the real functional spans of different places during different parts of the day. This way, we can dig deep into how diversity affects how people move around and interact economically and socially in the city. To measure diversity, we rely on mathematical metrics that take into account the number of different destination points, where they're located, how concentrated they are, and a number of other contextual factors. It's all about bringing scientific precision to the fascinating complexities of the network of activities in urban life. Next up is the interface. It's all about how streets connect in a city, basically the geometry of the street network. We're talking about things like how many intersections there are, the choices you have when you're walking or driving, and how easy it is to get from one street to another. The interesting thing about the interface is that it's not just about urban traffic patterns. It can also help us understand why certain activities cluster in specific neighborhoods and why some places feel safer than others. Here's a neat aspect of the interface. It's like a perfect example of how the local elements can have a big impact on the whole neighborhood or even the city. Just by adding a new connection between two nearby spots, we can see a significant improvement in the entire network system. This, in turn, affects the economics and security of the entire area, adapting to the new conditions. Now, when we talk about the interface, we're getting into the basics of geometry and math. We're looking at concepts like closeness, betweenness, network integration, and mean depth, which is a mathematical idea from the world of graph theory. It's like uncovering the hidden mathematics behind the urban flow. Permeability is another key category about the streets, but different from the interface. Here we study how the street network absorbs and channels different types of traffic. When we talk about permeability, we're actually drawing inspiration from fluid mechanics. Think about how different fluids, each with its unique properties, flow through channels or pipes. Well, in IMM, we're doing something similar, but with streets. 
We're studying how the street network acts like a permeable structure for various types of urban traffic. We're exploring factors like the size and length of streets, topography, and how direct routes come into play in this urban flow puzzle. It's like understanding the blood circulation of a city with the ebb and flow of people and vehicles. Now, let's talk about accessibility, our next key category. This one's all about how well the public transportation network meshes with the layout of the origin and destination points. In simple terms, it's all about how easy it is to reach different parts of the city using public transportation. When we dig into accessibility, we're really looking at how well things like bus stops, train stations, and transit routes are integrated, how fast you can travel on a bus or train, and where these transportation hubs are located. It's kind of like measuring how convenient and well-connected your city's public transit system is. So when we study accessibility, we're diving into the details of both where you're starting from and where you want to go. And we're also looking at how the public transit system fits into the big picture of urban dynamism. Now we get to another key category, and this one's all about how effective the public transportation system is. We call it effectiveness. It's basically about the capacity and coverage of the public transit system concerning the density of the given area. So when we measure effectiveness, we're really trying to figure out if the public transportation system can keep up with the supply and demand. In a nutshell, effectiveness helps us understand the limits and potential of urban areas when it comes to handling the flow of public transportation. As I mentioned earlier, the important parameters here are related to density, the capacity of public means, and the development factors. Thank you for watching this video. We will be glad to provide you with more information about the key categories and more. See you in our next video.